Rome expands. Expansion of the Roman Republic. Rome began as a small city, but eventually grew to a massive empire. The Roman army was made of patricians and plebeians. By 265 BC, Rome had gained control of the Italian peninsula. There were a series of wars that expanded the reach of the Republic before the beginning of the First Punic War. The following video shows the growth of Rome from 400 BC to 265 BC. Carthage, the nation represented by a dark tan color, is Rome's adversary during the Punic Wars. The Punic Wars, Carthage. Between 264 and 146 BC, Rome and Carthage fought a series of three wars. These are called the Punic Wars. Carthage was a North African city founded by Phoenician traders. Both Rome and Carthage were cities that controlled large areas. Carthage was Rome's major rival for power in Mediterranean. Punicus is Latin for Phoenician. The following video will discuss how Carthage came to be a Mediterranean power. For centuries, Carthage was the dominant power in the western Mediterranean. They rivaled the Roman Republic during its rise to empire, and nearly destroyed it. Savvy Carthaginian merchants bartered, bought, traded, and sold a vast variety of goods throughout the Mediterranean world. To a far field is the west coast of Africa, and the island of Britain in the west. Carthage became a fabulously wealthy metropolis of over half a million people, and the envy of her Mediterranean neighbors. To the Greeks they were known as the Phoenicians, a name derived from the reddish-purple dye the Carthaginians and their ancestors from modern-day Lebanon became famous for producing and selling. The Romans transliterated the Greek name Phoenician into Punicus, for which the Punic Wars between Rome and Carthage were later named. The people of Cartadast, or Carthage, meaning New City, considered themselves to be one people with that of their home city of Tyre. The Tyrians, and the other coastal cities of the Levant that the Greeks called Phoenician, considered themselves Canaans, which are the same people as the Canaanites mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible. The Canaanites were the ancient indigenous people of the Levant. During the Late Bronze Age, those living on the coast of what is now Lebanon became masters in the construction of ships, seafaring, and commercial trading. After a long period of Egyptian domination, for three centuries, roughly between 1100 and 800 BC, these Canaanite cities thrived due to their expertise and lack of any major foreign imperial interference with their internal affairs. These seafaring Canaanites, aka Phoenicians, founded over 300 colonies throughout the Mediterranean. Originally these were small towns of a few hundred people, comprising a fortified port, workshops, warehouses, all to aid commercial activities. Over the centuries, several of these grew into some of the largest and most prosperous cities in the Mediterranean. Carthage, meaning New City, as the name implies was one of the later Phoenician colonies to be founded. According to legend, Carthage was founded in 814 BC by the Queen Dido, who fled Tyre after her husband was murdered by her greedy brother Pygmalion. Migration to Carthage and other Phoenician colonies drastically increased when the Assyrian Empire began to exert control over the Levant. During the first century of Carthage's establishment and growth, it was aided by the larger older Phoenician colony of Utica to its northwest. Early Carthage paid annual tribute to its mother city of Tyre, as well as yearly rent paid to the Libyan tribes to their south in return for occupying the city's land and surrounding agricultural area. Around the year 650 BC, Carthage had grown to the level where it founded the first of its very own colonies, directly ruled by an appointed magistrate. Over the next century, the Carthaginians' fear of influence increased in the western Mediterranean, as the fortunes of the Phoenicians in the east steadily declined. Assyria was overthrown by the Babylonians, who besieged Carthage's home city of Tyre for 13 years, eventually forcing it to pay a heavy annual tribute. Carthage then assumed the role as protector of all Phoenician colonies, whether they liked it or not, from pirates, inland natives, and especially the Greeks, who had also been aggressively colonizing the western Mediterranean. Relations between the two people were tense, often hostile, 
but yet very close. The Carthaginian king Mago I, who founded Carthage's most illustrious royal dynasty, married a Greek woman from the rival city-state of Syracuse. Mago secured an alliance with the Etruscan League of City-States, which also had largely hostile relations with the Greeks in the region. In a major victory, together they strategically defeated Greek colonial forces which had settled in Corsica. Carthage solidified control over Sardinia, while Corsica became subject to the Etruscans. During Mago's reign, Carthage stopped paying rent to the Libyans for use of their land. Tyre ceased to have any significant political influence over Carthage as it was incorporated into the Persian Empire, and Carthage clearly established itself as the leading power in the region. Although most Phoenician cities accepted Carthage's protection willingly, some had to be coerced, such as the venerable city of Gades, which was besieged and taken by force. Mago's reign is commonly considered to be the beginning of the Carthaginian Empire. In the east, the Persian Achaemenid Empire conquered the Phoenician city-states and proceeded to incorporate them into their empire to a far greater extent than the Assyrians and Babylonians had done before. A Persian plan to expand westwards by conquering Carthage was thwarted when the Phoenician sailors who made up the vast majority of the Persian navy refused to set sail against their fellow countrymen. Instead, Persian plans for westward expansion narrowed to focus on the constantly quarreling Greek city-states, which didn't turn out so well. 38 years before the Battle of Thermopylae, Dorius, the brother of King Leonidas who led 300 Spartans in their famous last stand against the Persians, set out to found a colony in North Africa. Three years after its establishment, the Carthaginians rallied the Libyan tribes of the region to expel the Spartan invaders. This greatly increased tensions between Carthage and the Dorian Greeks in southern Sicily, who were related to the Spartans. The following year, in 509 BC, the city-state of Rome liberated itself from Etruscan domination and established the world's first republic. That same year, the Carthaginians dispatched an embassy to Rome to establish friendly trade relations and sign a treaty delineating Carthage's zone of control and the maritime rules Rome had to follow. The speed at which Carthage negotiated and implemented the lopsided treaty is testament to Carthaginian influence in the region and their adept awareness of foreign political matters. It is reasonable to assume that it was standard procedure for Carthage to sign similar treaties with other minor powers throughout the western Mediterranean to protect its dominant position in commerce. Although the Phoenicians on occasion were prone to infighting, their internal strife paled in comparison to the intense and bitter rivalries found among the Greek city-states of Magna Graecia. When the Greek tyrant of Syracuse began to consolidate power over the whole island of Sicily, his rivals petitioned Carthage to intervene and prevent this. The Carthaginian king Hamilcar spent three years gathering a massive army, supplies, and thousands of ships for the invasion of Sicily, which ended in disaster. At the Battle of Hemura, the majority of the Carthaginian army and the king were slain. Approximately 150,000 pounds of silver were paid to the Syracusans in return for ending the war and keeping the borders as they had been before. This disaster led to a complete overhaul of the Carthaginian political system. The king had wielded near absolute power. However, this was checked by the fact that the nobility could vote him in and out of office, and the position was not hereditary. Afterwards, the king was relegated to a ceremonial position, and eventually phased out completely. His authority was replaced by two judges, called Sufits, who both served single terms of office. The judges were elected by the Senate, which was several hundred members strong. The judges proposed subjects for the Senate to deliberate on. If a unanimous decision was reached, their word was final. If there was disagreement among the Senate, or a Sufit objected, then a vote was taken by the Popular Assembly of Citizens to decide a matter. Aristotle praised the Carthaginian system, as they did not suffer the yoke of a tyrant, nor the sedition common in Greek democracies. For 70 years, Carthage maintained peace with other Mediterranean powers, despite being repeatedly invited to join the Greeks' constant squabbling with one another. Carthage instead focused its energy on exploring, establishing new trade routes, and expanding its influence over the native Libyans and Numidians of North Africa. Internal control was also solidified in the empire through colonization. New colonies were founded and old ones reinforced with citizens from Carthage, many of whom were the poor and down and out who were compelled to go seek opportunity elsewhere. After 70 years of peace with the Greek city-states of Sicily, Carthage answered a Greek city's request for aid against the attacks of its neighbor. Taking advantage of this, Carthage sent a large invasion force to the island that won an impressive streak of battlefield victories and sieges. 
Four of Sicily's wealthiest and most powerful cities were utterly destroyed. Much of their population was enslaved or massacred, in an act of retribution for the part they played in Carthage's humiliating defeat 70 years prior. The Second Sicilian War came to an end when a severe plague swept through the island, vanquishing a greater number than the war itself had. But a plague can only do so much. Carthage and Syracuse were at war with each other only six years later. Throughout the 4th century BC, five more wars were fought against Syracuse for the control of Sicily, most ending with one side receiving minor gains. The seventh of these Sicilian wars, Carthage conquered the entire island except Syracuse, which they besieged. The tyrant Agathocles of Syracuse managed to secretly lead a counterattack force of 14,000 men against Carthage itself. The Carthaginian army hastily abandoned their siege and returned home where they were defeated. Agathocles besieged Carthage for two years, but its defenses were too strong. The Carthaginians raised a new army, defeated the Sicilians, and made peace on favorable terms. The Carthaginians were then in effective control of all of Sicily, a goal they had diligently worked centuries to achieve, and they got to enjoy it for 28 years. The Punic Wars, the lands between Rome and Carthage. Look at the map of the Carthaginian Empire and the Roman Republic. Do you see the islands between the two nations? Sicily, the large island southwest of the Roman peninsula, is the land Rome is trying to take from Carthage. The First Punic War. The First Punic War was fought over Sicily. The war began when Rome invaded Sicily in 264 BC. Hamilcar Barca was a leading commander for Carthage. The Romans had a disadvantage when the First Punic War began because Carthage had a large, powerful navy. Rome had no navy at all. The Romans captured a Carthaginian ship and built replicas to defeat the Carthaginians. The Romans learned to fight at sea. After three years of fighting, the Romans finally won. The First Punic War resulted in the Roman Republic gaining control of the island of Sicily in 241 B.C. The First Punic War How did the First Punic War make Rome stronger? Rome built a navy and learned to fight at sea. The Romans went from having no navy to having a navy strong enough to defeat Carthage's large, powerful naval force. Strengths of Rome Cause effect the Roman army and navy grew powerful and committed, and it conquered lands around the Mediterranean. Rome was able to defeat all threats and expand its power and control. Hannibal. Hannibal was the son of Hamilcar Barca, a leading commander for the Carthaginian army. He became a soldier and eventually took command of Carthage's army. He was bitter about Carthage's defeat in First Punic War, 